if you're holding your camera trying to decide which shooting mode to use, well, I've got one question that makes that decision much, much easier. And we'll talk about it today. Hi, I'm Lynn Morton from shutterbuglife.com. And today we'll talk about choosing the right shooting mode and the one question that makes that decision so much easier for you. But before we get going, when I'm teaching photography, one question I always hear from photographers, especially emerging photographers is, which lens should I buy next? You might still be on the kit lens or you might be on one of the lenses you got with your first DSLR and you're thinking, I know to get the kind of images I really want, I've gotta move off this lens, but I'm not sure which one to buy next. Well, I've got something for you. I created an ebook that answers all those questions for you and more. It tells you everything you need to know about lenses to make good decisions about buying your next lens and your best lens. I call it the ultimate guide to camera lenses, and you can have it free by just going to lenses.shutterbuglife.com or clicking on the link in the description. All right, go get it now. One of the important decisions you'll have to make when you hold a DSLR or mirrorless camera in your hand is what mode will you use? If you listen to a lot of the photographers online, you'll hear them say, you have to shoot in manual mode if you're really serious, or you, I only shoot in manual mode, and you'll hear versions of that. And you might skip straight to manual mode without really understanding why you're making that decision. And really, if you do that, you can end up in manual mode, still acting like you're in automatic, and you don't want that either. So what I'd like to talk about today is what each of those modes do, when you would use them, and why. And then we'll boil it all down to the one question that'll help you decide which one you need. If you're shooting with a DSLR or mirrorless camera where you can take complete control of your exposure, on the dial, you'll see some version of PASM or for Canon shooters like myself, P, T, V, A, V, or M. And each of those, of course, does something very different and specific. So let's go around the dial one at a time and talk about what each of them would do and when you would use them. Now, as I go through the different shooting modes, I'm going to talk primarily about the shutter speed and the aperture. I'm not going to talk about the ISO. We'll talk about that in another video, but for the purposes of the shooting mode discussion, we're looking primarily at the aperture and the shutter speed and we're leaving the ISO alone, which we'll address first based on the amount of light. Now, in most cameras, you'll see an A for completely automatic. In a lot of cameras, you'll see it's a green A. We call it the green zone. In that mode, the camera makes all the decisions for you. It reads the light, it decides how much light it needs, and it decides how to let the light into your camera by choosing the correct combination of shutter speed and aperture that it thinks it needs for this scene. And when it does that, you have no input whatsoever. You have one decision, take the picture or don't take the picture, but you can't make any adjustments. Now, the thing about it is the camera will choose something middle of the road for you. It, it will not choose anything that will give you anything really dramatic. It's going to choose a middle of the road aperture and a middle of the road shutter speed, but you will get a picture with enough light because that's all the camera cares about. But you want more than that because you're a creator, right? And you want to be able to create something interesting with your images. And so you want to take more control. The next notch over, you'll see a P for program mode. Now this mode acts very similar to automatic in that the camera, again, reads the light and decides on the quantity of light and decides how to let the light in with your shutter speed and your aperture. But in program mode, what you can do then is after you've seen what it's chosen for you, you can make an adjustment. And in many cameras, you can, you can turn your dial and it will, it will take both shutter speed and aperture and it will adjust them both at the same time to keep the same quantity of light, but it'll let you shift from, let's say you want a faster shutter speed, which will then require oh, a more wide open aperture. It will make those decisions in concert as you turn the dial. In program mode, you can also say, 
I don't think this is enough light for my subject. And you can do compensation, exposure compensation, which means it's you can it, you will say, I like what you've just done here, but I want more light. And so then you can tell it to add more light than it thinks is it should have and then take the photograph. Or the opposite, you can take say you can take your your exposure compensation and dial it down so that you're letting in less light than the camera thinks it should have. So it starts with here's what I think you should do with a middle of the road setting and then after that you can override it in program mode. Now next you'll see TV or S and that stands for shutter priority. It's time value on my Canon cameras and S for shutter priority and the on the other brands. And in this mode, you now choose the shutter speed you want. And when you've done that, the camera will make the, the adjustment to your aperture to make sure you have enough light, what it thinks is enough light for a good exposure. So you choose the shutter speed and said, this is what I care about most. And the camera says, fine. I'll make the adjustment with the aperture to make sure you have enough light. But what you care about most is the shutter speed, so the camera will not touch that because you said, this is my priority. Now, on the other side, you can say with A or AV, what I really care about is my aperture or my f-stop. So I will choose that and lock it down, and the camera says, fine, to get you enough light, I will adjust the shutter speed. But you have locked the, the aperture, and the camera will not touch that because you've told it, this is my priority. It's called aperture priority. Now, in both of these modes, you choose one, the camera makes the adjustment for the other. Now, what's the primary reason you're making these decisions? Well, the aperture is used to show depth of field. Your f-stop is a tool you'll use creatively to show the depth of field, meaning how much of the image do you want in focus when you, when you focus on your subject? How much of the area in front of and behind your subject do you want in focus? Do you want it blurry to separate it from the background, or do you want everything sharply in focus to see everything from front to back? sharply in focus. You get you make that decision by adjusting your aperture. The larger you go, the smaller the opening, and then you will have more area in focus. A good rule of thumb is at F2, if you line people up, two people will be in focus, and F22, 22 people will be in focus. So that's the end of the dial that you'll go to to create different effects for your apps, your f-stop or your aperture. So so this is why in, in aperture priority, you're saying, I want to control the depth of field in most cases. On the other side, the TV or S, time value or shutter priority, lets you now control how fast the shutter opens and closes when it's letting in light. So you can make it go really fast, like at a thousandth of a second, or slow at one-tenth of a second. And you make this decision because it helps you show the, it helps you show motion or movement or the perception of motion or movement in your photograph. You know that the camera freezes everything and so it's a still image. But what you can do with the blur is communicate to your viewer that something is moving. Everything else is sharply focused. This one thing is blurry. I know that it's moving. Or you can decide that I want to stop the action, have everything sharply in focus. You make that decision with your shutter speed. So when the shutter opens, anything that moves while the shutter is open shows up as a blur or a streak until it closes. And so to show something moving, you'd, you'd have a slower opening and closing. You have the shutter open and stay open long enough for a movement to occur. And you close it and you'll see that blur. And that tells your 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 viewer that something is moving Be, and, and and because everything else is sharply in focus you just see the one thing that's moving and now you know ah in relationship to relationship to everything else i know this is moving this is how you show the perception of motion or movement with your shutter speed and even with longer exposures what you're really doing is again showing a long distance of movement with a long opening of your shutter. So with S or TV, you're controlling, you're controlling motion or movement by how long you let leave the shutter open 
and what you can show moving in front of it. Now, that's your, your AV or A or TV or S. That's what those two control. Now, in manual mode, you have complete control. So in every other mode up until now, the camera looks out and decides how much light it thinks it needs to get good exposure. Even in, in your shutter priority or aperture priority, the camera's adjusting something else to keep it where it thinks it is the correct amount of light for the correct exposure. But in manual mode, the camera no longer does anything like that to help you. You have complete control. You can adjust your shutter speed any way you want, your aperture any way you want, and if you don't have enough light, it will be dark, and if you have too much light, it will be blown out. You get to make those decisions because you're in complete control. And then what happens is, as you keep, keep shooting, in all the other modes, the camera is still trying to read the light with every exposure, and it, so if you're moving and the light's changing, it's rereading and, uh, and recalculating exposure so you can get in any shoot, when you're looking at the same thing, if you're moving around, the image can be light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, just depending on how the light looked at that point. But in manual mode, you can now lock it down and achieve a level of consistency that if the light hasn't changed there, and I'm not, I know it's not changing on my camera, I can get more consistency with the same level of exposure. And then I get to decide, do I care about shutter speed? and showing action of action or aperture and showing depth of field. Now that you know all this, when you happen upon a scene that you want to photograph, how do you decide which mode to choose? Well, it's very simple. You ask the question, is my subject moving? That's the one question that can help you get to this decision much, much faster and let you choose the right, sh the right shooting mode most of the time. Is my subject moving? So I'm walking up and there's a softball game in front of me and I want to photograph the softball game. Is my subject moving? Absolutely. They are playing and they're running around bases and they're throwing, you know, they're throwing the, the, the softball and, and the batter is swinging. There's a whole lot of movement going on. And so now I get to decide, okay, I'm going to use my shutter speed or shutter priority. And then I get to decide, do I want to show motion or movement? Do I want when that batter swings to, to, to freeze everything in, in motion? Or do I want to show the ball moving and the bat swinging? Do I want to show them when they're running that, that they're actually moving fast? I get to decide that. When they're sliding into home plate, do I want to freeze the action so that it looks like, you know, one moment in time and the, the, the dirts are just flying in the air? I did that with um, a, a horse race. The horses are coming around the, the, uh, the corner, and with a fast shutter speed, you see all the dirt just flying up in the air and just freezing right where it is. That's my fast shutter speed at work. And if I want to see show something moving, then I slow it down with a slower shutter speed, and then we see the blur. That tells me there is, there is action going on. So that's when, you, that's when you would choose your shutter priority. Is my subject moving? If the answer is yes, then you're thinking shutter priority. Is my subject moving? If the answer is no, then shutter priority is no use to you because that shows motion or movement and my subject isn't moving. So why would I use that? I'll instead go with aperture priority and then I'll decide how much of a depth of field do I, do I want to create. If I'm shooting a landscape scene and I want to make sure everything is going to be sharply in focus, I choose a larger number like f11 or some other large number with a small opening that lets me have from front to back of my scene, sharp, scene sharply in focus. And I might be shooting a, a, a portrait of someone and I want to blur the background out to separate them. I'll choose a lower number that gives me a shallower area in focus and it's called shallow depth of field. And I get to decide that also with my aperture or my f-stop. Now, what about when you're using manual mode? Well, the question still applies. Even in manual mode, which I will use if I'm shooting something where I know my light is not changing and I want to shoot and keep consistent, consistency through my images, I'll still think first about, is my subject moving? I'm going to photograph a wrestling match. 
is my subject moving? Yes, it is. So even in manual mode, I'm going to make a decision based on my shutter speed. I'm going to decide I really want to stop action here. So I'm going to go with one five hundredth of a second. And then I will make the decision to for how much light I want by adjusting my f-stop. So it's the same thing. Now, if you go in manual mode and choose middle of the road for both aperture and shutter speed, it's like a very complicated form of automatic. You really want to use when you take control of both of them, do it so you can do something creative and, and shoot more creatively and make these decisions to create something more interesting from your photograph. So if I am shooting in manual mode and I'm photographing a person, I can still say I want the background blurry and start with a lower f-stop or aperture, a wider opening for a shallower depth of field, and then adjust the shutter speed to make sure I have enough light for the effect that I want to create. And that allows you to very quickly ascertain what shooting mode to use. You are in a parade and you, someone's coming down the street and you said, I want to photograph this. Is my subject moving? Yes, they're twirling batons or throwing up in the air. I'm thinking shutter speed. Do I want to freeze it there or do I want to show blur of it moving? That's what, you, that's what you use to decide your shooting mode. And if you do that, in most cases, there are no absolutes, but in most cases, you will make the right decision for the right creative effect for your camera. Oh yeah, one more thing. Some of you astute observers noticed that I had an FV on my dial. Well, that stands for flexible priority. It's something Canon introduced with the EOS R line of mirrorless cameras. And what that does is it gives you the flexibility of controlling either the shutter speed, the aperture, or the ISO. And then the camera will control the other two to get correct exposure. So you can toggle now between all three in flexible priority mode shutter speed, aperture, or ISO, and let the camera do the rest for the others. Quite honestly, I haven't found a good use case for it, so I don't use it. I just ignore it. But I wanted to address it because you probably saw it on my camera and wondered what it was all about. Now, what I talked about today is really just one of eight questions you'll ask yourself to get the ideal image. Now I talked about all eight in another video and it should be popping up in your screen right now. You can click it, go there and see what all eight questions are and where this question fits in that whole decision tree. Well, there you have it. I hope that was helpful for you. We're gonna continue to deal with some of these foundational topics just to make sure that everyone is on the same page and they understand the fundamentals of photography. We'll continue to progress as we move on and we'll try and have something for everyone, but I want to make sure that we're all on the same page and we all have the foundations of our photography locked in. Speaking of which, if you want to know more about lenses, remember the ultimate guide to camera lenses at lenses.shutterbuglife.com. All right, that's it for today. I'll see you again next Thursday with another one of these tutorials. Until then, Go out there and create something amazing with your camera. Take care.